mustache to get off your face. <laughs> Not hard, and if you want to know the answer, buy me a beer tonight. Question three, I can't afford Celebrate. What can I do? So that's what I'm going to talk about here. You can perform smartphone forensics with open source solutions, with making friends in the community, um, and with cheaper tools. So not everything's going to be free. But if you cannot afford to pay $300, you may not be doing forensics. So just keep that in mind. Things you have to consider. What about third-party apps? If you are from a very rich lab, and you have Celebrite, XRY, IEF, everything under the sun, you are not going to get all application data. The issue is people think they do. People think they have that fancy find evidence button, they press it, and they're like, oh, look, I can see that Heather's friends with Rob Lee on Facebook. Well, you know what? You miss everything else. It is impossible for these vendors to keep up with third-party apps. It is your job to be smarter. You have to understand, one, what does that app do? So if you're using Facebook, for example, when we click, if we want to check in right here, and I want to tag all of you people in this room that we're checking in at the Hilton, when you click to check in on Facebook, what, what do you think happens to all that data that's listed there, all the suggestions, if it's suggesting stubs or the bar around the corner? Do you think that's cached on the phone? Yes. Do you think the tools report that to you? The scary thing is sometimes yes. It will report it as locations Heather Mahalik was with her smartphone. That is false. Now we're doing like the Casey Anthony thing here. You don't want to report false evidence. You do not want to trust your tools. Now how are we going to do this without breaking the bank? Um, this is the hard part. Getting the data off the phone is one of the hardest things to do. Um, when I teach 585, people are always like, I want to learn the acquisition. But then when you teach the ac acquisition, you complain, this is too basic. I don't want to learn to press buttons. So it's always, what's going to make you people happy? Um, if you heard Sarah Edwards talk, she was talking yesterday about, you can jailbreak an iPhone if you have access to it. So now we're talking passwords. You may have to spend $200 to get an IP box to crack the passcode. But if you can jailbreak a device, you can do an SSH overview. Um, Cindy was mentioning JTAG. So yes, it's not a commercial type solution. It may cost you $250, a soldering iron, and some burned out phones because you've messed up, but you can do it. It is possible. Um, something else to consider too is where is the data stored? So if we're looking at third-party apps, for example, and an SD card is involved, do you think it makes a difference if you acquire the SD card through the phone or outside of the phone? Yes, it does. Do you think you'll break links if you don't do it both ways? Yes. What happens if some of the data is encrypted on the SD card? Is it encrypted on the phone? It depends. So you need to dump these devices every which way. You need to understand the data. You need to understand how it's stored. It is your job to do this. Understanding your phone. So these smartphones, what's really difficult is the phone is so smart and the users are really dumb. <laughs> so that's just being honest, like Lee said. Users are not intelligent. They don't understand what the phone is doing for them. Um, these phones are thinking in advance. They want to be one step ahead of you, just in case. So if it says, I take a picture of this class right now, and I go to post it in an app, it may already have cached the location information. And even if I say no, I do not want to include the location information, guess what? It is cached somewhere. It is stored in a database. Do you think the tools out there pull that information for you? No, but if you have a free hex viewer, you can get it. So as long as you have a database and a hex viewer, you can recover this information. It's just learning how the user uses their phone, how the data is stored, and what is this smartphone actually doing that hurts us. This is something I always yell at people for. You have to know your tool. It is your job. You cannot expect um, the celebrates of the world to know everything and understand that the user didn't check in to 15 places that were suggested. They're just pulling out location information and showing it to you. So they're doing exactly what it says, location information. Here it is. Does it mean the user was there? No. That is your job. You have to know the limitations of your tools. You have to know the strengths of them. And you have to know where to look if your tool is failing you. Um, there are great scripts out there. And Driller is one of my latest favorite tools. Um, I, if you're law enforcement, it's free, by the way. So if you reach out to Dennis, he will give you a free copy indefinitely. If you're not law enforcement, I think it's about $300. It cracks passcodes, it parses databases, it does a fantastic job. It's not going to get deleted data though. If you want deleted data, I suggest you use um, Ryan's scripts or Mary DeGrazia's scripts. 
They write fantastic scripts for the community to use that are free, and it works. Sometimes it works better than a $15,000 tool. It's pretty amazing what you can get for free, but the hard part is you need to know where to look. You need to know where is that evidence and what is it supposed to look like, and more so, what does it mean? So if you pull out that data, what does it actually mean? Did the user actually do that? I had to throw this in for Rob. Never trust application security. So this is an example of Cyberdust here that kind of caused a little shit storm <laughs> with Mark Cuban. He was very, very upset that this occurred. I did a webcast, and we realized that Cyberdust actually, in this version, it was fixed two days later, unfortunately. Um, note to self, I will never do a webcast on this information again. You'll have to reach out to me directly if you want to know how to decode these. But it was just double base 64 encoded. So Adrian, the cheeky forensic monkey, is writing a script right now so that you don't have to jump through these extra hoops. So now you point it to the database file, it's going to do double base 64 decoding for you, and it's done. So cheap versus expensive, yes, there are differences. Um, it is easier to use the commercial forensic tools, I will not lie to you, because they know where to look to get you started. If that's all, if you're just going that far, then you're probably missing at least half your data. So yes, they do get you a little further, but if you educate yourself, you can do this for free. So it's very important that you realize that. And the best advice I have for you is do not bite the hands that feed you. These people in the community do things for free to help you. So don't complain that you don't want to type in one command line that you need a GUI. You have to take the time to learn it and ask for help. I've had people say that they want a script, but they won't help me create data. So you, you really have to not bite the hands that feed you be appreciative, and really just learn where the data is so you know how to understand it.